Good morning, it's Haz here, and today we'll talk about something else from the usual, and also give some love to Splatoon's PvE horde mode, Salmon Run. Salmon Run is a fantastic PvE mode to play, not only because of its rewards every map rotation for money or double experience tickets, but it's also a great mode to practice weapons, and of course, have tons of fun. Now, I made a vote a few days ago on what kind of content you'd like to see more on the channel, where weapon guides were winning by a mile. But I'd like to know if Salmon Run is something you all do or play, and if there is interest in more of these videos, but let me know in the comments section. While Salmon Run is a lot of fun, at the same time it can get frustrating fast, as it's not an easy horde mode, and the lack of proper matchmaking and relatively easy time to rank up can also result in unbalanced matches where players are not necessarily prepared to face a certain difficulty, so in this video I'll go through 8 tips that will greatly help you win more and be productive in Salmon Run, and also a fun bonus for extra information. Tip number 1 is the obvious one, to work together as a team. Salmon Run might seem like just a fun mode or secondary mode compared to PvP, but it is hard and challenging, especially in the final ranks. It requires teamwork and knowledge on how to deal with certain situations, or you will fail the run. There are too many times when teammates wander off alone to deal with a big shot or a scrapper alone on the shoreline of the stage, just to get surrounded by salmonids and get splatted alone. The team is only as strong as the weakest link, and missing even just one member can be devastating if in a few seconds a maw or a steel eel and a flyfish spawns and you have to get somehow on the shore to revive that one person while still missing 15 golden eggs. If you're alone, first think if it's worth to jump to the shores. Is there anyone else covering you if you get in trouble? Could those boss salmonids come closer? Maybe it's worth to wait. Or if you really think you really need to go there, first signal your team that you need help and tackle it together. 4 out of 5 times going alone is the bad choice. Tip number 2 is to deal with big shots, stingers and flyfishes as soon as possible. As I said earlier, there are situations that are a must to deal with and this is one of them. But most of the time, you can't do it alone. Signal your team if you find any of these bosses, especially big shots usually require help, and make sure to deal with them quickly. In general, I feel players don't signal enough in matches, even though it's the only way to communicate. Leaving these three on the stage will absolutely overwhelm you and limit the amount of space you can move, and if you don't splat them before the next wave of bosses, it won't be possible to recover the run no matter what, as simply you won't have turf, space or time to splat them. Even if you can't fully splat a flyfish, just destroying one of their launchers will already limit the amount of damage they will do to half. Tip number 3 is to help with flyfishes by knowing that you can splat them with your specials. While bombs are an easy way to handle flyfishes, you won't always have the ink to do that in time, especially if there are multiple bosses on the stage. Most specials can in fact destroy flyfishes in most bosses if you target their launchers with crap tank or inkjet, but a special such as Booyah Bomb will flat out split anything in its range. Don't shy away from using your specials against special bosses like the flyfish, as they alone can ruin a whole run. Number 4 is to know your weapon roll. This also requires for people to work as a team of course, but if everyone knows their roles, this would be less of a problem. As a charger, your job is to deal with bosses quickly and efficiently at good range like Steel Eel, so the team does not get overwhelmed by them removing space. You shouldn't be the one jumping to the shore trying to get eggs and paint the ground, you will only get splatted. Or if you're using a roller or the arrow spray, paint the turf as much as you can and deal with the majority of lesser salmonids. You can handle them the most efficiently, especially rollers, so help your team and let the big shots deal with nasty bosses. Since you can also paint efficiently and have good movement, get those harder to reach eggs. Know the weaknesses and strengths of your weapon and play according to them and not the way that will only get you splatted. Sure, in some cases your teammates won't be very cooperative, it's better to keep to your role and practice that and help the best way you can and hopefully they will learn not to leave collecting eggs to a splatling or a charger user. Tip number 5 is to make use of Big Shot's cannons. Big Shots can fire cannonballs to harass you near the basket and they are quite annoying. That is why you have to deal with them as soon as possible. But there are also benefits to Big Shot spawning and that is their cannon. You can use their cannons to shoot golden eggs near the basket where your teammates can quickly gather them. Make use of it but don't overstay your welcome. As much as the cannons can be an advantage, 
If you're too greedy, they can also be your downfall by staying in a dangerous spot where too many salmonids and bosses spawn and there are 6 or 7 eggs and you want to collect all of them. But maybe it's just better to collect 1 or 2 eggs and then leave the rest because you will get overwhelmed. Tip number 6 is to please remember to use your specials. I can't count how many times we lost runs with specials still up. Now, also don't be the person who wastes both of your specials in wave 1 just to down a scrapper, but remember to use them, they are incredibly powerful. A Veltime Booyah Bomb can turn a whole run upside down and a single inkjet can deal with 3 flyfishes and secure a victory if you remember to use them. Generally speaking, I think the reason players forget to use them is that Salmon Run gets stressful and overwhelming very fast from 0 to full 100. So in general, my advice is that it's better to use your specials when you think this might get bad. The moment you start to feel a little bit overwhelmed and you think this could be bad, there are a few specials that you know it's hard to deal with, use it. It's much better to use your special when you still can, rather than when you're already panicking, three of your teammates are splatted and then your run just ends. Tip number 7 is to please use your this way signal more. I talked about this before, that this is the only form of communication we have in a game mode that really needs communication. This way you can help your team gather to deal with flyfishes, big shots, and make sure you work together. Or gather up when firefly waves start, as that wave can be only dealt with if you work together. But also if you get splatted, please, at least signal once. Too many times have I seen that people are just floating around splatted and wait for a revive. Now don't get me wrong, sure, we could see that someone is splatted, but it's another focus point for your eyes when possibly you're already overwhelmed by a boss on the left, another salmon on the right, a flyfish on top of you, and also a scrapper chasing you from behind. So please help your teammates out. A good tip is also to use this way if you're the last one standing, as sometimes it's hard to see where the surviving player is. And if you use this way, you can herd everyone together for quick revives. And my last tip is to try collect eggs near the basket. This will not always be possible, but you should strive for it. If you can try, lure maws and use your grenades on them near the basket, or lure scrapper there as most of the time the basket is in a location that the others can help you flank the scrapper. It's going to be easier to deliver the eggs, and overall the whole team is safer too. It's important to deal with the bosses that won't move away from the shore, but you don't necessarily need those eggs. There will be other bosses spawning and those eggs should be priority first, as if you can't move around the basket, it doesn't matter how many eggs are laying around, you won't be able to collect them. Always think before going for a distant egg, is it worth it? Are there other bosses that would be easier now to collect instead? Most of the time, if an egg is too far, it's better to leave them there, unless the whole team moves together. But I said there will be a bonus tip, so we are not done yet. Kohozuna is Salmon Run's new super boss and he is super fun to fight against. But can you know when he is about to spawn? There is a very easy way to tell by watching out for the third wave's announcement. If the game is telling you it's the final wave, then it is the final wave and you will have no Salmonid King spawning. But if the game says the third wave is about to start, then you will have a Kohozuna spawning and you better get ready for it. Now thank you so much everyone for watching this video. I hope these tips will help overall with Salmon Run, and in general to succeed and have smoother runs. This mode is really really fun and I'm happy it's available 24-7 in Splatoon 3. Now we just need to spread word and help each other out with all the tips and strategies to improve the general experience. If you like this Salmon Run video, please let me know in the comment section, and if you would like to see more videos for this game mode too, because as honestly that would make me really happy to diversify my content and just talk about more topics in Splatoon. As always, thank you for all the support with Splatoon and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye